The local pub is the beating heart of every country town, but the Victoria Hotel in Oyen is right now going through heartbreak. They've been left $125,000 out of pocket after a big company blew into town and left without paying its bill. <laughs> I was always brought up that you pay your bills on time, or if you can't, you know, you make your arrangements as such. And the way this has been handled, it's just pretty poor. It's not, it's not good business. Welcome to Oyen, population just over 1,000. This tiny Victorian town has only one school, one bakery and one pub. So when a huge solar farm project was announced, locals thought they'd won an economic jackpot. As country folk do, they generously housed and fed fly-in workers. That is until one of these companies suddenly packed up and skipped town, leaving behind an almighty bill. You feel like you're fighting a losing battle. It's disappointing that, you know, this has happened. Oyen will always have a special place in Matthew Shaddock's heart. He was raised here and a few years ago bought the local pub, the Victoria Hotel. Good, good town, good people. Yeah, it's, it's simple. It's a nice life. Crippled by the pandemic, this once was the heartbeat of the community. You know, any sort of occasion, sort of after footy, you, you come back here after cricket, you come here. Um, any sort of celebration, you know, there's, it always sort of ends back at the pub. By all accounts, Matt's a humble, hard-working publican, but he says in the cutthroat world of business, integrity means very little. Yeah, it does sort of keep you up at night a little bit, knowing that, um, you know, you've paid your bills for those, those debts that are owed to you, but, you know, you're, you're probably not going to get that money. Like most, Matt thought the $300 million Kayamal solar farm project would revitalise the community. It was very, very big excitement. Um, and like we, we knew we had accommodation here and we were you know, really looking forward to filling this place up. French firm Total Erin is the major investor in the project, which in turn hired Biosar Australia and another company as principal contractors. Biosar then subcontracted Northern Territory-based Rusker Brothers. Rusker Brothers sent a small army of workers to Oyen. Matt says at the height of their stay, up to 50 employees were living at his pub and fed three meals a day. It was enormous for, for the business. There was more staff employed. But soon, Matt says, trouble began, with bills piling up and Rusker running late on paying them. There was the thought in the back of my mind that, you know, if these guys defaulted or went, went bad, you know, who's going to pay me, I guess? Suddenly, Matt's worst fears were realised. Ruska left town, leaving behind a bill of, wait for it, $125,000. I guess you could say this is a, you know, drop in the ocean, the amount that we're owed, but it would go so far to this business. Like, it would really, you know, it would be huge. It would be enormous. You couldn't put it into words, I don't think, what it would do. In small towns, there's only so much money that can go around, so when you get outside um, contractors coming in, the town gets very excited about it, uh, outside money coming in. In December last year, Ruska collapsed. Administrators found it was likely to have become insolvent on around 31 July 2019, if not earlier. That's the same time its workers were running up a massive tab at the pub. We are of the opinion that the directors have breached their duty to prevent the company from trading while insolvent. Massive, massive um, hole out of, out of our town, that's for sure. There's surrounding towns that that has happened to and, um, yeah, they just completely die. Yeah, they just turn into ghost towns without the local water and all. Simon owns the local tyre shop, which he says also ran into trouble. We would owe money by the same company. Um, luckily, it wasn't as much as uh, what the Victorian Hotel was going through. We were able to get ours. Dean's lived here all his life. Very important we don't lose any businesses in town. It becomes a critical time where you just can't afford to lose any more, otherwise uh, small communities fall over. Despite this business falling into voluntary administration, Ruska's other business arms have continued to trade as Directors Robert and Shannon Rusker have more than a dozen other companies in their names. 
bit disheartening really. Like, you know, if I was the director of a company and still owed people money, I would been no backwards to pay that, that bill. It looks like they've um, carved up their business into uh, different units. Insolvency expert Damien Walton is from Rigby Cook Lawyers. If one part of the business goes belly up, uh, creditors can't um, access those other assets and the other aspects of the business can continue as before. Ruska has now agreed to pay back $980,000 of its debt, allowing the directors to take back control of the company. But unsecured creditors like Matt fear they'll only get a few cents in every dollar. His business is bleeding and Matt fears the unpaid tab may force him to call last drinks. He's pleading for one of the other major companies higher up the solar farm chain to stump up the cash. It would be be pretty big, it would be massive. We'd, uh, we'd probably have a, a big party, I'd say, to celebrate. Matt wants to refurbish this century-old building and restore it to its former glory. Yeah, we'd probably put a bit of money back into the pub as well, do a, do a bit more work on it. As for Ruska... Yeah, I don't think they would be well welcomed back, put it that way. And Ruska didn't return our calls or emails, and Total Erin said the mess is outside of its control.